Hello again, this is Salamander Anagram, and welcome to part two of this course on the new blocks framework in Reactor 6. In this video, I'll show you how to build the synth that we were using in the second part of the previous video. If you'd like more free Reactor content, please check out our website at adsrcourses.com. We have got a ton of Reactor stuff and much, much more. So I've got my file browser open and set to the blocks library. And I'm going to begin by opening up the utility folder and dragging in a note in module. So in addition to telling us the note pitch, this module will also give us outputs for um, MIDI gate, MIDI velocity, MIDI modulation wheel, etc. So this is a very useful utility. And next up I want to add some oscillators to our project so that we can control them with the note in module. So let's open the boutique folder and we've got two oscillators in here. You can tell because they have the big OSC at the front of their name. So let's add both a multi-wave oscillator and the OSC5. And I'm going to go to the Monarch folder and load up the Monarch oscillator. And finally I'm going to go to the Bento box folder at the top and load in an oscillator from there as well. So each of these is going to receive incoming pitch data from our note in module. And what we're building here is a fairly standard subtractive synth. So these oscillators are going to act as our sound generators for this synthesizer. And we'll use a filter and an envelope and some reverb to shape the sound coming out of the oscillators. Okay, so I'm using the pitch output of our note utility module to control the pitch of our four oscillators. But I want to mention that you can also use any signal from the blocks framework to um, attach to the pitch inputs. And of course they'll um, respond in a different way than the normal pitch input will, but you can create some really great experimental stuff this way. All right, so our multi-wave oscillator at the top here has a gate input that resets its oscillator. And I'm just going to use the incoming MIDI gate for that. So the oscillator will start from its starting position whenever we receive a new MIDI gate. In addition, we have a reset input on the bento box oscillator that I'm also going to connect to the incoming MIDI gate. And finally, our Monarch and Bento Box oscillators both have FM inputs. So I'm going to route the Monarch oscillator into the FM input of the Bento Box. And the sign output of the Bento Box is going to modulate the Monarch oscillator. So these two oscillators have an FM connection between each other. And um, we can get some pretty gritty sounds using that connection. Okay, so we have our four oscillators and we want to mix them all into a single signal so that we can apply a filter to that signal and it will affect all of the oscillators at once. So I'm going to add a mixer module which is in the bento box folder and it has four inputs which is convenient because we have four oscillators so we'll wire each oscillator into its own input and that will provide us with a mixed signal. Now these oscillators are always running and they don't have amplitudes controls so if we wire this to the output you can hear that the oscillator is just playing all the time. So we want a way to control the amplitude of the oscillators so they're not always making sound even when we're not playing notes and for that I'll use an envelope module. 
And a standard way to use an envelope to control the amplitude of our oscillators is to use it in combination with another module called a VCA, which stands for a voltage controlled amplifier. So let's grab that, add it to our project, along with an ADSR envelope. And I'm just going to spend a second rearranging the panel view here so everything's in the right order. So you're going to mix them together and then it's going to pass through the envelope. The envelope is going to control the mod A input of the VCA. And we want to set the level knob to be completely controlled by that envelope. So I'm going to set the mod A to on and turn it all the way up. And after we connect the gate input of the envelope, you'll see the envelope is controlling our level knob. Whenever I press a note, it turns on. So that's the way to control the amplitude of a signal over time using the blocks framework. So we'll run the audio signal into the voltage controlled amplifier. So our VCA is going to be the only module in this synthesizer that doesn't use the standard modulation uh, that we were that I was showing you in the previous video, the LFO and the Monarch envelope. It's the only one that doesn't respond to those modulators. So that's slightly awkward setup, but it's the price we pay for having a dedicated amplitude envelope, which I think is worth it in this case. Next up, I want to add a filter. I'm going to add the Paul filter, which is a nice zero delay feedback filter that's new in Reactor 6, as far as I know. And I'm actually going to insert it between the mixer and the envelope. So I'll take the audio input out of the mixer and run it into the envelope. So some filters have what's known as self-oscillation, which means that they can make sound even if there's no audio coming in at the input. I'm not sure if this filter um, self-oscillates, but I just wanted to put an envelope after it just in case it does. So coming out of the voltage controlled amplifier, I'm going to add a reverb module and I'm going to send the output of the reverb directly to our speaker outputs. All right, so that's all of our audio modules. The only other things that I had in our project in the previous video was our modulators. So for modulators, I used uh, two different modulators, a Monarch envelope, the uh, right here, and the LFO from the Bento box library. So I want to have the LFO and the envelope trigger on a new MIDI note. So in order to do that, we can connect their gate inputs to the gate output of our note utility module. And I want to name these mod A and mod B. And that way, if the user is paying attention, they'll have an easy way of knowing that these modules are the modulators and they're not part of the audio signal chain. Next up, we can wire mod A into all of the inputs named mod A and mod B into all of the inputs named mod B. And in doing so, We'll make it so that each of these modules can be modulated by the LFO and our Monarch envelope. Once again, I'm just going to leave the VCA having the singular envelope connection that it already has and leave it disconnected from the other modulators. In order for the key tracking to work in a standard synth fashion, 
the filter wants to receive the same pitch information as the oscillators do. So I'll connect it to our note in utility. In addition, I'm going to connect the sine wave from our bento box to the FM input of our filter. Sine waves are great at FM, and that's why I'm using them whenever possible. Okay, so the last thing I want to add is that our modulators themselves have no way of being modulated. I want to be able to affect these with something, so I'm going to connect the velocity and mod wheel outputs from the note in module in order to serve that function. And now we can affect the LFO um, either with incoming velocity or with the mod wheel. All right, so that's about it for this video. Um, I'll leave you with a sample of the sound just to make sure that everything's working all right. In the next video, I'll show how we can expand upon this and add some more modules and some more concepts into our blocks framework. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram. Um, Check out more of my work at reactortutorials.com. We have tons of free reactor content. Thanks for watching. Yeah.